set in a way yeah. that they will always mm, have a thing for the pioneer yes. of things. Yeah. So we see it, if, if you think about these big corporations we see in Uganda yeah. and how they advertise and the different promotions they bring, you will uh, somehow the target market will always have the pioneer front of mind. Yeah. Um, uh, so for me, creativity, that, that is how important it is because you will get the masters, you, 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 you will be You'll be an A lister on the papers, mm -hmm. yeah. But if 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 you do not know how to channel, because there is not there is not one company mm? mm -hmm. in the arts or in business, yeah, as we know it, mm -hmm. there is no there is not a company that hires more than ten people, yeah, and all of them are not creative. There is always creativity yeah. in a company. Yeah. When COVID hit um, and we started experiencing shutdowns, I think March of 2020, uh, first, you know, no one took it serious. We were like, you know, it's three weeks. Yeah. You know, they lock us down for three weeks, you know, we get back to work. Then it becomes another three weeks. Then it becomes another month. Then two months. Before you know it, it's six months. So, yeah. and that's when a lot of people, I think, got into depression. Yeah. Like across the board, not just creatives. Yeah. So th there was a lot of uncertainty. Uh, you, you could not know or tell to what extent that was going to happen. And, and as a business and a business lead, I realized quickly that now, is, now I need to lead my troops. Uh, so instead of, I need, I need to change uh, the things that I have control over. Yeah. I, I, we don't, we didn't, or even up to now, we don't, we don't have control over when economies are open, when are they closed, what happens to COVID, that we don't have control over. So I sat my team down and told them, guys, this we have no control over. So if we focus, what we need to do is change our focus and, and move it from what we do not have yeah. and put it to what we have and then ask ourselves, what can we do with what we have? Yeah. And the only thing we had was time. So we said, okay, we have three artists on the label right now. You have time. That's the only thing you have. You don't have shows. You don't have control of what happens. You don't have control of the economy. But you have time. Yeah. So we're like, okay, Vinka, had, uh, she was coming. She was at the back of a very hectic 2019. She had released an album, a song every month with a video. Very hectic. She had already been planned to take some time off. Yeah. So we're like, okay, what do you do with your time now? Rest. Because it had been planned anyway. Yeah. So Vinka took time off. Uh, focus on her family. She's a young mother now, and, and it, it was perfect. So she wasn't really, really, you know, hurting anyway. You look at a person like Winnie, also a busy 2019. Uh, she had some personal projects that needed to be moving, so it was a good diversion as well to focus on certain things. She would have loved to perform more. You know, the, uh, the money would have done better. Yeah. But, but we said, no, let's change the focus. Then you have an artist like Azawi, who we had just put out on the market yeah. and then COVID hits uh, so the question is you, you, there's no shows, there's nothing happening yeah. uh, so this is going to naturally affect your, your growth but we said no it doesn't have to at least we have time so what do we do with the time? We go to studio produce an album that has gone on to be uh, one of Africa's best albums of 2020 yeah. was on the African Apple charts for a full month at number one yeah. and that's what we use the time for and if you look at what we did over the time, none of our artists, or even as a business, joined the crusades of, can we get opened? Can the government open us? Because we realize we don't have control over that. It doesn't matter how much you scream about it. It's yeah. a global problem. Yeah. We focused on what we had and yeah. what we could do with it, which was time, and that's how we used it. And, and, and we, you know, I'm glad we, we made that decision because now that the economy is opening, we feel like all our artists are in a good place. To start. 
Yep, Vinka took the necessary rest. Okay. She made a comeback last year with a, with a, towards the end of last year. Uh, we had so much lined up. Uh, she, she has some big announcements coming soon. As always, the, I think, most booked artist right now. So things you can't control, abandon. Focus on the ones that you can control. That was the strategy. That's what we did. Do you think you're ready to engage people once again after two years or three and a two and a half years of no activity brought about by COVID-19? <laughs> I think the advantage of the lockdown and the, the, the past two years has been like most of the creatives, whether they are independent or not, mm -hmm. have, been had, have been engaged in a process of creating content. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm curious to see what's going to come out of, uh, of this uh, now that we are free to start working. I'm sure everyone is going to be ready to prepare, to, to present something that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really worried about if there is content. I think I'm very worried about who is going to present it <laughs> <laughs> because uh, because uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, most people have yeah. actually yeah. not maybe actually have really moved on yes i mean they realize that we, they were chasing a dead horse you know yeah. and they they were like you know we are not going to survive two years of not working even trying to mitigate the you know life now that they are uh, you know they, they have started some jobs you know if you have a job uh, that is nine to five you're not going to start, uh, you know, going for rehearsals or going to dance in a studio. And what are you going to eat if you go there? So I think my biggest worry is about who is going to be presenting the content, mm -hmm. whether it's dance, whether it's theater, whether it's music, whether it's film. OK, film is different. But I think uh, there are certain art forms that are independent and they really need an effort for someone to be able to present it. And I think opening up without any support structure to help these people get back into the market, it's going to be really, really difficult. So for me, I think yeah. that's going to be the biggest challenge. Okay, so when you say there are certain art form that needs really, really support and there's some that needs to, what are those, you know, can you highlight some of them that I mean, need to? It, yes, I mean, when we are talking about like the independent art scene, uh, we are talking about um, uh, uh, some of the independent artists I know, mm -hmm. and they are the most challenged one are the contemporary dancers. Mm -hmm. The contemporary dancers, con first of all, contemporary dance is very, very uh, new to the industry, to the market here. And even when they have been working over the years, uh, you know, dancers like, uh, you know, Jonas, like uh, Julius, like uh, Oscar, have been really working hard to really cultivate their audiences. And they have been not really managing to get them, you know, to get them to fill up the, the, the auditoriums. And now that they are back, they need a lot of time. They need at least six to eight months to prepare a production, and which means that now that they they don't have money and they are opened up to start, they needed someone to you know, or they needed some kind of like a, a support fund to get them to start, so that they can be able to prepare their work to present it to the audiences. Okay. Yeah. And and and, and what kind of support are we looking at here? Money, of course. I mean, uh, it's money. Of uh, I um I don't think. Um, you know, there is anything else. Maybe also space. Mm -hmm. Space is also an important thing because some of them need space. They might have time and they might have money to survive on where to stay, but they might they definitely need space to rehearse on. Twenty twenty two relevance. Mm -hmm. You have to be relevant. Um, when the when our industry closed uh, in March twenty twenty, it, it, it was actually a crash. It crashed down. We had a couple of bookings, quite very many bookings. Remember, as I told you, twenty nineteen had been a very beautiful year, and it was covering itself over into twenty twenty. Um, as soon as COVID came in, everything crashed. We lost all our entire bookings, all the bookings. We had nothing happening. Warehouses were locked. It was termed as a dead stock 
from that point then. Then when they opened us up partially in July 2022, um, we actually thought that it was going to be the same script as we'd been working on before COVID. But we later realized that, hey, actually things have changed. The clients who were supposed to call us are not calling back anymore. They're not calling us anymore. So it was about shedding skin. We realized as legacy productions that we had to shed skin so as to be able to fit into the new way of doing things. Actually, our biggest fight, our biggest fear, um, as we're coming, walking through the three months of lockdown into when they opened up was the entertainment, the audiovisual industry not being relevant anymore. Because there was this term of millennials. Mm -hmm. Millennials are coming up with new ideas, the new normal, new way of doing things. You don't need to do any more conferencing with those big gadgets. You can do everything from your phone in the comfort of your home, so long as you have entertainment, so long as you have this small piece of equipment powered by internet. So, us getting back to be alive, we had to push things from the point of relevance. How relevant can we make ourselves as legacy productions mm -hmm. to our clients? Mm -hmm. How our clientele being corporate, how are we supposed to come back and step back into their space with what we can talk to them that is music to their ears, as well as adding value to their brands and images. Yes. Um, so, distinguishing prose poetry yes. and drama. Yes. This is an academic question. Yes. So let, let, let me just be frank with it. Um, so we have literature. Uh, literature uh, can easily simply be defined as the, the creative expressions of a, of a given culture, yeah. of a given people. And it is, it is normally done through writing, through singing, through speaking. Yeah. Now, literature, literature is that, is, is that creativity, creative expression that focuses on the written word. Yeah. As, as, as you hear the word itself, literature, yeah. literate, yeah. you know, meaning to write. Yeah. Now, uh, we, we are going to restrict ourselves to, to three things. Yes. So we talked about prose, yes. talked about poetry, yes. talked about drama. Yes. Now, prose is, is, is that kind of creative expression yes. that, that is more it's elaborate. Floor, yes. It is more elaborate. So if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're reading a novel, yeah. if you're reading a short story, uh, if you're reading a biography, you know that that, that falls within the. If you're uh, an essay, yeah. th that is in a form of prose. Yeah. Now poetry, poetry is more rhythmic. It is it it it, it is briefer. It, it, and, and 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 in most cases we we use a lot of descriptive and colorful language. So if if you look at a novel and a poem. What a novel can, can say in uh, 200 words, a poem can say in one page. Now, th th and, and th those are the differences between that's the poetry. The, that's the difference between it, these years. Yes. Yes. Now, when it comes to drama, yes. drama, the way you hear the word, <laughs> drama is language in yes. action. Yes. Language in action. Yes. So drama is that kind of written literature where you capture characters talking. Mm -hmm. But from what they talk, for you, the reader or the listener, you can infer what is taking place. Yeah. So drama is always, it, it always takes place when characters are, characters are either talking to themselves yeah. or they're talking to others. Yeah.
<laughs> it's, yeah. You see, you, first of all, there's needs for education. Mm -hmm. People need to, there is a need for education. And in, with the advertising industry, we, we have a big challenge because people always feel like they can get it cheaper elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know? And with apps like Fiverr, mm -hmm. uh, and there's another one called, I think, I forget the name, People Something. Yes. People are able to go online and find the service online, mm -hmm. pay for it, and the person will deliver in three days. And sometimes a local person is not able to deliver within that timeline. Mm -hmm. And so you find that you're competing against people online mm -hmm. who do what you do, and sometimes even do it cheaper. Yeah. The only problem, though, mm -hmm. is that you're not sure what you will get. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is not accessible to you, you know, mm -hmm. it can be a problem. Somebody can disappear. Uh, somebody can respond to you after several days and you miss a deadline after you have paid them. Uh, and all those are challenges you face with mm -hmm. dealing with an unknown face behind a computer. Yeah. So for the people who are local, the interaction builds the relationship. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, people buy from people. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to foster a relationship with the person, it helps you. One of the things we say is that um, um, you and your customer are in a relationship, your partners. Mm. Don't treat them like they're just giving you a service and you walk away. Build a relationship and let it grow over time. share something that yeah. is very fundamental having gone through all of these things yeah. when was the first time you first held your first cash hanging <laughs> out of the music you and Sylvie, and, and, Abrams, and, and how did it how did it work for you guys how, how were you feeling when you first hand it and you say mm. yeah this is coming out of music mm. did you buy something for your parents how did it <laughs> uh, first, uh, first thing before I, um, I get into that. I'm yeah. happy that we are discussing this. Yes. Because then there were no talk shows like this. Yeah. You know, um, most of the artists of, 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 of that era, not, not just musicians, but even DJs, yes. you had to, you know, you had to learn by seeing someone do it. Yes. You know, because people didn't know how to teach. Yes. I mean, you can't teach what you don't know. No, yeah. So you find that for the DJs, you had to first lift wires and cables and you see how it's done. Uh -huh. But now you're pressing buttons, you, you, you don't know even what they call them. Uh -huh. But because you know if I do this, it makes that. Uh -huh. But if they bring you someone to teach them, you cannot. Because yes. teaching is a skill. Yeah. So uh, it's the same thing for, 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 for music. That we have a generation that can teach music. Yeah. You know? The, can but share the experience yes, which yes. they didn't. Uh, yes. Were not given then there then. were very few. Even yes. just hearing of a work. Yes, we had professional musicians. Uh -huh like Afrigos and the like, but workshops, workshops where I think I had never heard of a workshop from, from uh, in that era, like someone holding a workshop for musicians to teach them how to write, teach them how to conduct themselves, to brand, teach them about leadership, personal development, interpersonal skills and stuff like that. Yes, yes. That was unheard of, yes. you know. So, but right now they are, you know, platforms that someone puts a platform just for that yeah you know so it's it's a very good thing that we are, we are discussing this because it was unheard of thing yeah yeah so it, it shows how the the, the sector has has grown right. um first time uh, what was the first time uh, first time i grabbed um well there are a few maybe the bigger amount but of yeah. course the few small small payments you know, from small, small performances. Yes, yes, yes. But the first time I had something that was really, really good was in in 2001. Yeah. Uh, me, Sylvester Abrams, and our colleague Fredo, we featured in a play called King Oedipus mm -hmm. by the, uh, the literature play by the Sophocles. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on the school syllabus. Yes. Yeah. So um, the director of Alliance Francais then yes. uh, was a friend to the director of 
sharing center. Yes. And you know what used to happen yes, at the yes, sharing yes, center. Yes, 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 yes. So one time during the completions for youth in the new millennium, yes. they, you know, we're getting to the new millennium. Yes. So there was a, a singing competition yes. um, and the theme was youth in the new millennium. Yes. Actually, we won Sylvester and Abrams. Yes. We are one of the winners during that competition. Yes. So the director of Alliance was one of the judges. Yes. He liked our performance so much. It was very energetic, the composition. Then um, it, at that time they were doing that play. Yeah. The play had very uh, top names yes, yes. Uh, like Philip Ruswata, yes, Bob yes, Kisiki, Chinobe, Habat Chinobe. These are the guys you used to look at yeah. from far and you admire and say, I yes. wish I could uh, even just talk yes. to these guys. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Sabo, yes. Uh, you know, and so uh, many. And I know there are some six more in so, there. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, many so yes. Um, we had no, uh, that, that was 2000s. Yes. I, I think very few people had mobile phones then. They were still yeah, expensive. Yes, yes. 2000, yeah. Uh, 2001, yes. they were expensive. So we didn't have a phone. Yeah. And now the director met they discussed with the director of Ali Alias uh, sharing yes. Geo's board and they're like they would like to have us feature in the play yes. that was still in its de development stages yes. to feature with with rap music wow. like with in intervals wow that was something new I was like well, we're very happy but it took looking for us was a problem remember <laughs> some yes. didn't have a phone yes of we didn't have phone yes. numbers. Yes. We didn't have phone. Yes. For, we, we didn't have phones, and so we didn't have phones. Yes. And if I remember well, Sam also didn't have one. Yes. So he had to find a way of looking for us. Yes. It was a challenge. So he sent someone to uh, Kampala SS, yes. where we were, yes. to look for us and give us, you know, um, the news. Now the most interesting part is that, yes technology like mobile phones were not a yeah. common thing then yeah. but there is a way we get you know we go to each other that is so interesting these mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. when someone's phone goes off they are off they are off completely yes. you, you know you find a challenge l looking for them yes. but then we knew how to go up about some things yes. that yes. he doesn't yes. have a phone yes. so where does he hang out these days we, we don't even know where some people hang out yeah you know but then you had to know where someone hangs out yeah on a Saturday, where is he? On a Friday. And we used to connect with people. Yeah. So some got us, you know, you know, uh, we, you know we, we had the meeting. It was a very wonderful experience. Yes. And um, th it was a sold out concert. It was three days. Schools came and they were left outside because the tickets were sold out. Uh, they asked for more, like, you know, you know uh, that, that, that we, we stage it again the next weekend. Yeah that you know um the director was like you know uh, i think it's just enough for yes. those who are missed yes. you, you know hopefully next time but of course there was no next time yeah. but it was a very very nice performance sold out kids were screaming whenever they did this they didn't even bother listening to what we were saying <laughs> whenever we got on stage in the <laughs> intervals so we were rapping yeah. about yeah. what is about to happen, to but happen. In, in question form. Yes. So we're not giving the answers. Yes. So the moment they opened the curtains, we said, ah, it's a screaming. <laughs> they didn't even bother listen to the message, you know. Yes. It was a very nice because we were already big yes. on the on the local scene. Yes. We were not on radio and TV, yes. but we were big yes. in schools. Yes. yes in schools and public places. Yes. So just that name Sylvester Abrams, whenever yes. curtains opened, they went crazy. We signed autographs, you know. Yes. I think that was my first time signing an autograph. Yes. Yeah, if I remember well. Wow. So wow. the payment was really, really nice. <laughs> you know, the, the I, want, I, want you to tell, I want to tell us how much was the first signing <laughs> there. Because um, we're talking about is it possible now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, it was, I think it was, if I remember well, yes. I think it was 400. Yeah. Wow. But there was a per diem for rehearsals to yes. keep you going throughout the rehearsals. Yes. You, you, you know, and that part of my force didn't include food, it was just something for you to, to transport you. Yes, yes. And of course, we got into the network of yes. the uh, you know, of the Phil Pulsuatas and the uh, big names, uh, now. yeah, yeah, you know, the big names, you know, the playwrights, you know, and all that stuff. So, yeah. we got into that network now. Yeah. That was our first time to know 
I think, if I don't remember well, Chinobe Herbert. Yes, Herbert Chinobe. I, I, I think yes, it was yes, our yes. first time. Yes. Uh, Herbert. Uh, Very you know, talented man. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes. So, uh, Philip Huswata, we were seeing him on, on TV. So, we broke into that network now yeah, of yeah. people, yes. you, you, you know, like the theater audience. Yes. We, we broke into the theater network. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a very nice experience. I, feel, I think it was 400,000 then, yeah. if I remember well. Yes. Which is still a um, lot of money. Yeah. I wonder, what did you do with um, the money, by the way? Um, of course, I, was, I wasn't paying rent, so... <laughs> <laughs> Did you go back home, give Muse something? I wasn't okay. paying rent, so of course I yes, didn't spend it in clubs, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't spend it in clubs. I'm sure you went back But uh, you know, and, you know, yeah, yeah. nice shoes, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, um yeah. at least I, I was I've always spent on myself wisely. Yes, yes. I've always spent on myself wisely. Yeah. So just nice shoes look good, you know, t shirts and I don't remember what I did with the rest, you know. Yeah. yeah. But it was and, and and then after that they took us uh, to a buffet. Yes. All the People, the actors, <laughs> people who are involved in the production at No More Gallery. Yes, yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> that was my first time to go at No More Gallery yes. and not spend my money. Yes, yes. You know, and you were eating at the high <laughs> table also. Wow. So it is possible. So it was a, it was a, yeah. a, a special treat yes. that should motivate you. Yeah. It wasn't even about the money we got. Yes. But the network we broke into. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you know, you know that the audience. Um, that's because the, the you can spend the money today and it's gone yes yes but how have you benefited from the people you've met along the way yeah. that's very important your network is your net worth yes so you can have the money it can go in a minute yeah. but how are you able to make that money again how are you going to, how are you able to reach out to those people <music>
I, I, I have a, I've been okay. Yeah. I have constantly been uh, COVID negative. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I assume. That's, that's a very good one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've not tested in a long time. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, we are okay. A lot has changed. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, tried to change with the change. Yes. Yes. And okay. along the way, you know, you discover <laughs> here, you lose here. But we yes, stay yes. above the water. Yes, mm. yes. Um, I just want to um, take you straight, to, uh, Richard, to the first question we always ask on the Creative mm. Industry Talk. Um, who is Richard Tuanje if mm. I am looking for you? Are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values defined as Ugandan? Mm -hmm. Yes, that question is usually a question that gets so many people punching on the streets of Kampala. And across the world, if you ask them a question, who are you? Yeah. Some people assume that everyone knows them. Yeah. And uh, yes, we see you on TV every day. Yes, we see you all across Africa. But who is Richard in a nutshell? That is a very difficult question. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, personally, I believe people's <laughs> some people's values change along the way. Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is. It is. It is a life is a game of you know discovery and rediscovery of. Yeah. Of, of self, but personally, I believe, um, plainly put, Richard Tuanje is uh, a Ugandan who is a multifaceted uh, entertainer yeah. um, who has his hands in not just one thing actor, comedian. Uh, I don't know whether I should call myself a singer. Uh, yeah, I think I'm safe calling myself a singer, not a musician. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to sample that song already. Yeah. Here Are you serious? We're on the <laughs> floor. We're to talk. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I do uh, a bit of music. I'm, I'm a producer yeah. on, a, on a wider scale because, uh, well, most of the art I do, I also produce. Yeah. yeah? Uh, some with the team, some alone. Yeah. And uh, as a human being, I, 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 I stand for good for all. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm. That's, that right there is a quite a deep statement. I stand mm. for good for all. I would like to take this moment, first of all, to welcome everyone to the Creative Industry Talk from all across the world. Uh, thank you very much, all our brothers and sisters in the United States of America. I, I hope you did not jump on that plane and you're part of the 600 people from Afghanistan, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and of course, uh, to all the creative people all across the world, we want to say thank you very much and welcome to the space for the creative right here in Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, going to the rest of the world. Uh, Richard, yes. welcome to the show. And now that we know you, and now that we understand who you are, just uh, away from seeing you on TV, mm -hmm. our topic on the creative industry talk today is about creativity for business success in Uganda. Yeah. Creativity for business success in Uganda. Uh, when we posted this yesterday, a lot of people wrote back and they were asking creativity for business success in Uganda yes. they don't even understand what creativity is mm -hmm. now you are putting the mix of success in it and I mean how are we going to do it so I said well we will have to have a discussion about this and of course we're going to be joined by Faiso Chiwewa we were supposed to be joined by um, you know Jeremy Biemanzi mm -hmm. from Nomad Advertising but unfortunately mm -hmm. Jeremy has got some uh, an emergency that needs to attend to he will be joining us next week okay. And of course, we want to take a moment to welcome Faiso Chiwewa all the way in the outside countries. How are you doing in the cold? Um, uh, thank you so much, Eddie. I am okay. I am. Um, I just arrived uh, like five minutes ago in Antwerp. Um, it's a, I would say, the capital of the Flanders in Belgium. Uh, so it's where I am, and I had to find my way to do get to the show so i'm very excited to join you guys thank you very much faizo thank you very much faizo first of all for joining us i hope you have had a very good ride on the train in uganda here when we talk about the train we only remember in the 60s i don't know whether Richard, <laughs> our train hasn't yet been <laughs> I, I, I know nothing I about trains in uganda <laughs> <laughs> i just read <laughs> Uh, what I see yeah. down there yeah. below Ginger Road, I yeah. think those are just carriers, you know, wow. <laughs> train has. Yes. And when we, my uncle tells me the trains were good, so seeing Pfizer ride on the train in yeah. Europe is, is quite an amazing stuff. But gentlemen, welcome mm -hmm. to the show. So Thank today you. we want to just ride straight to this, you know, discussion. I want to give you a context, Richard. Mm. There is artistic creativity. Yes. 
and uh, there is a more general kind of creativity mm -hmm. that we see in people mm -hmm. that could also be called the ingenuity innovation the lateral thinking thinking outside the box we've yeah. heard people talk about this very much or simply the problem solver yes and we are going to mix the two together to basically find what is best for us in our discussion today we're talking about creativity for business in uganda and the success but the context here is that creativity in business is a nifty way of thinking mm -hmm. mm. Uh, that always inspires people challenges people and also help people to find innovative solutions that create opportunities that we yes. always use in our day-to-day -day life okay yes. and yes. of course opportunities yes. out of problems are key and we're talking about the pandemic mm -hmm. situation right now the COVID-19 has brought you know a, a challenge in the industry but how are we turning these opportunities and challenges to actually create opportunities to solve the problems that we have or we all had already before it is also the reason some individuals of course and companies attract our attention to either goods and services or to products that I we need yes yeah. <laughs> it comes from the creative mind the idea the amazing ideas at uh, sometimes seems sometimes seems very you know far fetched and <laughs> another times is, is merely <laughs> the follow have beaten and some people really just go through with whatever the flow is yeah but today on the show i want to take you straight to this background and i want to start with you richard right yes, here in the yes. studio mm -hmm. uh first of all is creativity an important skill to have it is a very important skill to have mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. it is uh, not for all yeah yeah um and i think you know the the nature nature's laws i think yes. dictated like that because yeah. i mean if all of us were creative yeah. uh it would be so hard to cope with the with the world <laughs> i mean you're trying to catch yeah. on this and yeah. something yeah. new has come yeah. but that is where we are going yeah, yeah? um uh, it is very important to be creative because okay. um it, it helps you stand out in whatever sector yeah i believe it uh you know when 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 you come most of us are followers yeah. before we get creative yeah yeah, yeah. We, we there's there's always a trend whether in banking uh the arts yeah. the sports there's always a trend and that trend at whatever given time yeah. in history or in the future yeah. it will have been brought about by a few creative minds yes so like you said it's it's, it's the creative ones who create even opportunities not yeah. for just themselves yeah but for for others for others yeah. uh and without just limiting it to 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 art it, it is so important that uh if, if if a particular sector is so clogged with competition mm. chances are the <laughs> one who is going to slide off the conventions yeah. will either stand out okay. or it's not a win all the yes, time yes. <laughs> <laughs> because yes. you can create your yeah. way yeah. to your failure yeah? that's true yeah absolutely so true. It is important to be creative, but it's also important to create uh, with high regard of the audience. Eh? Wow! We, that that you're creating for. Most cases, creative people are always are also very egoistic. So yes. when the idea comes and he likes it, mm -hmm. you you're not going to try and turn his idea yes, down. This is my idea. To I'm match the targeted yes. audience, yes, yes. he wants to run it the way he has thought about it. Yeah. Uh, so. It's, it, creativity is very important, but also most important is who are you creating for? for? Wow. Mm. Um, Faizo Chiwewa, um, all the way in outside countries, you've heard from Richard. Richard is saying that it is important that we... The, 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 the creativity is important skill for a person to have. Do you agree with Richard, Faizo? And also on that background, Faizo, how do we, you know, profit from the creativity in business if at all it is important as a skill? so much uh, first of all to compliment richard for how he looks i mean i can you can see that creativity has made on some weight despite all of us who are losing weight during this COVID, richard is gaining weight which is good to see that's the creative mind excitingly uh i would say um i totally agree with his notion on uh, yes creativity is necessary it's not for him but it's also um, you know something that we need uh, nurture in everyone uh, that's why we encourage our children at a young age to really try to practice different things uh, test different experiences so that they could, you know 
uh, and define themselves in the future, whatever course they take in life, to be not just redundant, dependent on uh, you know, what they are told to do or what they must do, but also be supportive of our community. And I'm always fascinated that it really contribute to changes that uh, we see in societies. Um, and you can see um, in, in Europe, you find a lot of things done, but not necessarily provided by authorities and governments, but by individuals who find hardships in terms of uh, their day-to-day -day life and they think about solutions uh, to go through these hardships. And those solutions then eventually become public necessities or public goods that everyone now needs to use. For example, you can, uh, if you walk around, you know, or if you move around, like just what you talked about at the beginning, the necessity of having a train. I woke up in the, in, in Holland this morning at 6.40 and uh, by 10 I'm in Belgium and I'm having a, a you know, a convert here. So that, that, that thought of creativity to say, more, you can call it also innovation, uh, to make people's lives easier is really what the our, our country would need more of this kind of, uh, you know, input in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. You might reach at you had the man woke up in uh, <laughs> Finland. <laughs> you tried Why is that, it? Why is was that meant to, to make me feel guilty? <laughs> Because I'm the reason this show started yeah. late. Just from Muyenga to Bukoto. <laughs> yes, he has juggled so much traffic and yeah. a lot of things have happened. But you see, Richard, that's why we're saying if there's a creative way of thinking about yeah. stuff, yeah. would be able to save and there'll be a lot more success. And sure. that really, really um, resonates with our topic today. Uh, Richard, mm. what jobs are in the creative industry? We're starting to build these things about you know, our discussion today. What jobs do you think are available? You're already earning out of it. <laughs> the creative industry. Yes. Uh, first, um, it, 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 it is so wide. Yeah. yeah. People look at the creative industry. When you say creative industry, they think about the, 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 the creative performance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you see, those aside, you know, we have people behind the scenes, you know, uh, the producers, the guys who do the technical work, uh, and then the creative industry does not just carry the, 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 the artistically creative or the performing artists. Yeah. You know, we are living in a time where, you know, um, life has changed. The phone, the phone is now a performing space. Yeah. The internet is a performing space. So, yeah. you, you know, you're holding your phone and you have uh, a multitude of stages here, yeah. you're free to choose, you know, Which the one? people who create all those spaces yeah. uh, are also creatives. They, yeah. are, they, are, they, are, they are at a very different plane of creativity also, yeah? yeah? Um, but, you know, all creatives are important. Yeah. I, uh, personally, I think to a certain extent, we are important in equal measure yeah. because uh, Mr. Eddie Okila is going to have a platform here yeah. that is, 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 is so different from other platforms. Yeah. And the reason he shaped it that way is to serve a certain, you know, um, uh, 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 segment of audience, yeah. uh, TV viewing content uh, seeking audiences. Yeah. But Okila will need uh, the performers yes. on. Yeah. Okila will be the producer. The performers will be there. The writers are going to get jobs. Um, that's um, uh, that's why sometimes me in Uganda here, um, the, 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 the only way we can have as many creatives incorporated into the creative industry yeah. is for those who can create to focus on churning out the art. Yeah. The more art yeah. you put out, yeah. the more people. Eh? Yeah. Uh, you pull into the value adding chain yes. yeah of the of the final products wow I, that i have experienced along the way when we seek to grow mm -hmm. you create more yeah. and you realize along the way we have you know brought in uh, this big number yeah. of contributors yeah. to the final product wow mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, Richard and Faisal, this is a very interesting part of mm -hmm. the show. The jobs that the creative industry have. I want to dive to Faisal in Belgium. Faisal, you've heard from Richard. What jobs do you think we have available in the creative industry? 
Um, um, I, I think, um, you know, as Richard said at the beginning, the creative industry is really huge. Uh, when we start mentioning the sectors within, I would call them, some are, some are sectors because they're informal, others are industries because they're formal. Uh, but there are also those formal and informal industries within the creative industry or the creative arts or the creative uh, behavior, I would say. Um, but the kind of jobs, let's start with, you know, you know what we are doing. So we are in the, in the arts. Uh, I'm a programmer and that whole line of business you are familiar with. Uh, Richard is in the, you know, in theater and comedy and uh, you know that cha that chain of command that chain of business is very familiar to us we know what they are doing and i think maybe what is different in this case is like the idea the the acknowledgement of the actual um number of people or number of jobs that are associated in this in our line of work when people see richard uh, performing at the national theater or at the at the comedy uh, comedy scene when they do it their grand shows every month people don't really understand the amount of work that is put in leave alone the cre uh, the the creative process of writing the skits they do but also the back side the backstage side we are look we are talking about costume designers, we are talking about uh, set designers, we are talking about, you know, uh, makeup artists, we are talking about uh, uh, communications person, ticketing persons, we are talking about uh, advertising, radio interviews, uh, you know, TV interviews and all, all these uh, jobs. And when you look at the people and the amount of effort as well as the amount of to this kind of work it's appalling and then these are some of the things that we know but then when we shift to with art forms like new media when we talk about new media we're talking about you know design graphics you know we are talking about uh, advertising we're talking about um uh, software development we're talking about uh, programming we're talking about all these things so when someone sees like eddie uh you're here hosting us i'm uh, UN Kampala, and we're talking to each other. They don't imagine the amount of work that was put all by the us talking to each other live in such a diverse space. So, this this is creativity. This is programming. This is thinking. This is offering a solution to as a to a need that is identified. Maybe not on a daily need, but it's almost something that you need once in a while. So. There are so many jobs, they cannot be counted. But what I want to assure the, uh, our listeners or our viewers is that we have, as within the creative industry, the highest number of employment opportunities. There are so many that need our services uh, in terms of when we get it to work. And there are also those that, so many people that we need to make sure that we pull off our events. When I have Baimba Festival, as, is, as, a, as a small example of what, uh, what happens within our day-to-day -day life, I have at least 1,500 staff working at one festival. Those include my core staff, they include service providers, they include volunteers, they include interns, they include, you know, partners, sponsors, and all these people are at the festival making sure that everything goes on as it is planned. So I cannot start mentioning how many jobs are there, but to be sure, they are very, very many. Wow. Well, you've heard it from Pfizer. Thank you very much, Pfizer. Richard, I want to come back to yes. you on this part. And of course, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, welcoming all the views from everyone who's watching the show. Mm -hmm. We are live on Facebook, on YouTube, and all across the world in all our platforms. By the way, we're live on our, you know, you know, you you know, www.houseoftalentuganda, ug.com. It's live, it's streaming for everyone across the world, so please enjoy. We want to hear your comment, kisses, and this is coming. Uh, we love to hear them. <laughs> we love to hear them. If you're if you doing well, kiss us. If you think we're doing bad, kiss <laughs> yeah. us. We are okay. We are creative people. We, we, we take this. Uh, Richard, yes. you've heard what uh, Pfizer just said, and I like mm. the first two questions and three questions. I want to mm. go to the third question, which is, um, mm. what are the types of creativity that we can profit from you know we're talking about creativity and we're always talking about creative people finds mm. just said something very interesting 1500 people worked at the concert i mean yes. a festival whenever we see you on stage uh, we don't understand that the fun factory has got a shipload of people behind just richard for richard to look good on on on, on screen yeah. and to be you know looking nice and to speak whatever is speaking nice on the on stage yes. there are a lot of people behind there mm -hmm. so i want to just ask you a question what type of creativity 
is there for businesses to honest given your experience as a stage performer mm -hmm. as a copywriter mm, which yes. means you're writing a lot of yeah. uh, copies to co yeah, corporate yeah. companies for yeah, products yeah. to be communicated about True. to be consumed True. what do you think uh you the types of creativity that is there that you can profit from as businesses yes yeah um, as individuals as well as businesses okay. yes yes, yes. Um, uh, you, you just mentioned some of the most important ones there. Yes, yeah. You know, first, the, the, just the creativity to produce, um, you know, art that can just, you know, touch people, uh, people's hearts and lift their moods mm -hmm. and uh, maybe also help them think, um, you know, in, in certain thought processes that they wouldn't have if they had not consumed yeah. certain pieces of art. That, that creativity is very important. That 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 one um, uh, is is that I think that is the longest uh, serving kind of creativity yeah, for humankind eh? because yes, yes. I mean since 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 the medieval times yes. um, that kind of cre creativity is demanded for yeah. for leisure um, now creativity for business development yes. creativity for business development where some some of these um, their talents that can be applied yeah. in all those places yeah. um, now okay, we have people like me who uh, applied their talents in places in, in spaces like copywriting yeah, yeah? Um, where you use your um, creativity to nail a message yeah. or speak to a company's potential customer yeah. and also speak to the one they have yeah. so that you know they, you it you need that creativity between you the brand owner yeah and the brand consumer, yeah. you need some creativity there to, to, to keep these people emotionally connected to your product. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes you, um, you might be good enough at designing the product. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not as good enough at gaining yeah. and, uh, and maintaining the confidence yeah. and emotional connect to your product. Yeah. That is when you need people who can, you know, pick that creativity off the stage, apply it in this business space also. Yeah. Um, the creativity of, you see, the world has become so visual. Yeah. The world is so, so visual that if you have a message and you do not design it in, in, in maybe typography, you know, you, you're not going to, <laughs> you have to apply some typography. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, and creativity has, has really, to me, we are living in a time where creatives have to be very awake to the fact okay. that 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 the, the, the audiences that we are creating for yeah. are exposing themselves yes. sometimes much more than we the creatives. Yes, yes. And I they're see. also becoming creative themselves yes. in their own right. Yes. Yes. So they attain a higher level of judgment yes. of your art. Yes. That if you do not expose yourself better yes. eh, or more than they are exposing themselves, yes. wow. the audience will <laughs> will run away. It will be three, yes, four yes. steps ahead of you. Yes. And by the time you wake up to chase this audience and yes. get it. Wow. Yeah. It's not that you're not creative anymore. Yeah. They have exposed themselves so. much more. And now, so creatives have to be on their toes wow. because our, our audiences are becoming more creative. Wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Faizo, <laughs> we want to dive to you in Belgium. You've had, I think, um, Richard just said something fundamental to understanding. If a business person is watching, they need to understand where Richard is coming from. If um, a creative person is watching, they need to understand that if you're not constantly putting your craft together, mm -hmm. that, that, that audience that you're creating that product for is yeah. going to come for you. And mm -hmm. once they get exposed, mm -hmm. they might edge you out, not because you're not doing something right, but because they're already exposed to a manner in which they can judge the product and know what is good and what is not. Just before we go for a break, Faisal, your thoughts on that one. You know, what type of creativity do we have in theater and performing art as well as, uh, you know, from a programming point of view as a guy who is always doing stuff for, uh, you know, entertainment. Whenever we are stressed, we run to you and you guys give us relief. Faisal, over to you. Yeah, you know, um, it's very interesting. And I, and I think as Richard says, that one of the things that we, we strive for as programmers is always the consistency and also understanding our audience. Um, like the Fun Factory guys really mastered the audience. I think they have never really failed to fill a space, whatever big or small they, uh, they occupy, because they know who their people are and what they want and how to keep them at the edge. I think it's, it's the whole mystery around 
building audiences how do you keep your people to they come to you they don't they are never bored speaking for Bainba, we've always developed um i don't know what we call it. we call it the experiencing audience our audience is very exper- experiencing uh they always want to see something new i think from the beginning we've always challenged ourselves and challenged our audiences to bring in um, a new feeling of an, a new art form. That's why we managed to introduce new art forms that were not really much on the market, like video mapping, street theater. Uh, we did things like uh, headphone disco. I, I don't know whether you, you know that. We know when we started it in 2009. Uh, and people always want to see what's new this time at Bainba. And when that drifts away, that you are not able to 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 do the more then your audience starts wondering what's going on they, they start finding or trying to find other opportunities or other options that's why they run away to other events but at the same time it might be also a good thing for you for example our 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 course in programming bimba has always been about, about experiencing audience but at the same time we forgot about ourselves then we took off some some two years of re inventing our programming and then the audience was confused and i didn't blame them but it was intended to go to kind of create this kind of tension between okay where do we go is it is it still the same by imba but they don't know what's coming up for them and i'm curious how they react when the new by imba comes back yeah well thank you very much faizo um you don't know how the uh, somebody just sent a message and says, you don't know how important this program is to me right now. I'm learning something that Richard has just said has tickled somebody. And he said, you don't know how much I've just picked from Richard in that mm. small space. I've always seen him on stage just making <laughs> us laugh. I didn't know the man can speak too much sense. <laughs> I don't know whether to take that as a compliment. <laughs> I think you should take that as a compliment. You see, Richard, we're going to take a break, but when you come back, okay. we're going to start from that particular point okay, of where yeah, people yeah. just uh, see you mm-hmm. on stage and assume that this is the sum total of the person. And they never know that this person is, there's more to this person. Well, the creative industry is going for a break. And when we come back, Richard Chiwanje and, of course, Faizo Chiwewa, all the way in Belgium, will be giving us a lot bit more about the differences between, you know, the, the creativity and innovation. These two words are always, you know, confused. And uh, you stay right there, pick a coffee, and when we come back, we want to hear your kisses and disses. If you have some kisses, if you don't have, you know, you know, disses, whatever it is, we're okay. The Creative Minutes Talk, we'll be right back after the break. people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm-hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yeah. I want us to talk about the corporate entities, the corporate society. I mean, the money comes from there to the creative Mm, art. mm. For a long time, while the creative people are thinking the spaces to create this stuff, you know, most ad agencies are run by creative minds. And uh, these creative minds 
Hallo. Welcome back from that break. This is Creative Industry Talk, where we sit and discuss things that affect the industry where we are. It's a platform that exists for everyone in the creative space to think. It's a platform that we come together to share ideas. There's a platform that we believe can bring together the creators and, of course, the policy makers on the round table to think and to come up with, you know, very... Uh, integrative mind maps that allows us to take the industry and the development around our country and our individual projects forward. Of course, Richard, welcome back to the show. Thank and you. of course, uh, Faizo Chiwewa, all the way in Belgium. We are missing, uh, you know, Jeremy Bermanzi from the advertising sector. We would have had a fantastic moment with him right there. And we hope that uh, Jeremy will be here next week. We think that this series of having Richard and Jeremy coming in and Faisal will run for the next two weeks. So if you're missing this one, Richard will be back next week. <laughs> but we want to hear from you. I'll start by a comment from uh, yes. one Frank Tugume mm. says, I'm always glad to be here. Oh, wow. And uh, a shout out to Richard on the show and as well Faizo. And he wow, says, uh, I, I don't know how you guys are doing it, but uh, Facebook is off in Uganda, but the show is on. <laughs> And Faisal just, we are not in Uganda. Tips, yes. <laughs> just gave him a tip on that one of what is going on. Well, Richard, welcome back to the program. I want to take you straight to... There is this, um, you mm. know, thinking Ugandans usually have, or generally, you know, uh, you know people yeah. always think that they see you on stage and they form an opinion about you. <laughs> yeah. And most times, because we are no long, we are not being like politicians or sitting and you know wearing mm, good ties and mm. something like this. People assume that uh, these are just uh, funny guys. Even the president has said this is this funny people before. But until uh, I mean, your colleague um, Annington Mujingo, they said you're seated here and then yes. he met the president and the president said, "I was told you have a lot of money. You are rich." Then he says, "No, I just have enough for me." But he says, "You funny people, where do you get money from?" <laughs> It, it's just an understanding that people don't have <laughs> around know. people. But what's yeah. your thought on that one? <laughs> how, how do we help yeah. people to start seeing that we're actually more serious people mm. than they think we are? Uh, you know, um, first, I think, I think the, the, the people who have that kind of mindset, yeah. Yeah, you know, the mind is a very funny place. <laughs> <laughs> what you expose... Yeah is what you know they take yeah. and they expound on that yes you know yeah. it does it, it will never end on the stage yeah. so they see richard acting a school child they see richard acting a, a headmaster then tomorrow the other show you are a drunkard yeah. you know uh and uh, you know they can they, they put you in there they paint a picture yes. of who richard is yes yeah off the stage yes and uh, that picture will never be very far from the picture they see here because you have given them the first brick to build their yes. image of you. Yes. So, <laughs> so yes. me, uh, personally, if I tell you my experiences uh, as, as an artist and the creative who applies my creativity in different spaces because I do professional emceeing yes, yeah. uh, for events of, of different uh, sizes and shapes. Yes. But I know uh, people who tell me when, when I get a gig, for example, yeah. they tell me, ah, you know, it was a process uh, getting zero, zeroing down, down to, to, you, you to you as a because person. Because the yes. bosses were like... Wanted this person here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we told them, this, no, this, this is gentleman is will fit nail it the way we want yes, it. Yes. And it's like, but this guy, man, the, the kind of comedy he does, will he handle this very comedy <laughs> event? And we see him, have a, yes, yes, yes. like they, they throw around lines like, yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. This kind yes. of event. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. um, uh, because you see, certain events I handle have, have yes. my, they're multinational. Yes. The audiences are not just Uganda. Uh, yes. You know, um, and uh, that goes down. It, it brings another issue, yeah. and all of us artists and creatives in Uganda have been uh, victims of our own uh, um, um, creativity. It, that is one, but also not working on our personal brands. Okay. It's just recently that we started working on our personal <laughs> brands, uh, 
with the help of social media, yeah. you know, people get to know the Richard Tuanje, yeah. separated from the actor, the comedian, the entertainer. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think it's, it's now you need to work on your personal brand. Yeah. That is a given. Mm -hmm. There are no two ways about it, especially if your money, you, you, especially if you want to start earning while you're not performing. Yes. Because we are in a time where man, you need to earn while you're not performing. Because we've tested months where yeah. now there's no performance. Yes, one and a half years. We are mm. not and believe me, you, yes, yes. the talents in this city yeah. who have worked on their personal brands and their personal brands speak for, for uh, uh, their personal brands uh, work up a value for them, yeah. they still somehow survive. Yeah. Uh, compared to those whose uh, brand they know is just on stage. Yeah. Uh, 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 on stage presence. Because then you limit yourself to a, a talent that only earns per performance. Yeah. And if you get that and expound on it, build a personal brand, apply your talents elsewhere yeah. or even learn because a lot of people have talents in this city yeah. but they don't skill the talent yes that's 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 another thing then also separating the the talent from his personality yeah also in our audience because we can never not think about the audience yeah the audience is where the money is it's it, where the business yes. is that's where things come from it's your product yes, yes. In, in 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 better societies yes they, they know how to tell apart the talent and yes. their personality yes. because the audiences also have a high understanding now of the arts. Okay. Here. Yeah. It's different. Here is different. The audience is still in its infancy on that point. Yes. We are still pulling them up yes. to consider the arts a legitimate source of livelihood. Okay. And revenue yes wow mm. uh, as a matter of fact another one has come here and says i like what richard is saying um this is now giving us an insight into who he is <laughs> and what this is about uh thank you very much richard you've changed my opinion of you on this show i was wondering how you're going to discuss this topic which seems to be a little bit more of a corporate side of <laughs> things than... <laughs> are you serious <laughs> Faisal Chihuahua, we want to dive to you. They see you with your backpack ah, you don't. moving. <laughs> they don't know you are a person who creates serious stuff. Right now you are in Belgium while others are in lockdown in Uganda. Yeah. How are you doing it, it Faisal? It's the perfect example, by the <laughs> Faisal, over to you. Yeah, I mean, I was just laughing about uh, uh, the comment on, on Richard because I find it fascinating. And of course, I mean, you don't, uh, um, uh, our our followers or fans, because for them, as Richard explained, uh, they don't have maybe the opportunity to explore the personality of Richard off stage, but they more often on stage and also on skits on, on social media. That's what they carry. And uh, yeah, it's not different from all of us. I mean, uh, even for you, I don't expect you to be or lifting heavy lifts in the, in the gym early in the morning so this is what what happens like when people don't really tend to have an, a deeper thought about an individual but um i think i mean if for me i wouldn't really i don't have a definition of my private or personal or, uh, work life it's kind of very intertwined uh, and of course i try to keep as much distance keep the mystery uh, of me uh, I, I tend to be very much distanced from people but I love crowds as well so and also maybe the other thing that you you guys don't know I'm very crowd phobic so when there are too many people I freak out so I tend to be <laughs> always hiding in the corner um, that's why I'm always tending to be backstage when we have festivals because I freak out when I see too many people or between too many people. Um, but yeah, that's that's a personality. Um, uh, it's something we are on. Uh, but I think being um, what people expect of you, um, it's really difficult sometimes if you, you don't person and uh, you just see them and give them a, uh, form your own opinion. And best you know, you know or hear, or, um, which I tend to ignore the time. I think it's also good as you're building the brand of yourself to not to always be distracted by what you hear or know or hear uh, or feel that people are, are saying or understanding of you what's on your line of work and that's why for me I 
that's what I tend to do most of the time. That's so true. Well, thank you so much, Faisal, for that one. Richard, you've heard from Faisal. Yeah. For a man who organized festivals, is, is, uh, is crowdphobic. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was his way of uh, psychologically fighting back the yeah, phobia. The phobia. <laughs> Well, um, uh, thank you very much, everybody who so far sent in their comments. And I, I don't know why you guys are always sending WhatsApp messages or Facebook messages. I, I want you guys to comment on the show straight live there and then. Send us your kisses and this is where very much welcoming them. Richard, yes, I think you can see where we're coming from. The topic today is about creativity for business success. And I think yeah. you've already tackled a little bit of it that the creativity, the things we have talked about, right now is something that people need to start thinking about mm -hmm. but i want to take you straight to my next question which is what is the difference between creativity and innovation given the background of people's opinion about who richard is about who mm -hmm. Faisal is about who Okila is about who any other you know creative mind is i bring the question to mind what is the difference between creativity and innovation because i think sometimes we mix this thing and you've said it in a very nice way you say mm -hmm. that as 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 creative people we, we, we were doing a disservice to ourselves. We are being one and the same on stage. Yes, yes, and yet we are yes. supposed to be completely different. Mm -hmm. On television, where I am more comfortable, they, they say that the character on television is really different from the character you're going to meet on the street. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you take the person on television to be the person you're going to meet on the street, mm -hmm. you're going to be really shocked. Yeah, and so true. is on the radio. Um, yes. But, I mean, dive into it. What is the difference between creativity and innovation when we're talking about success brought about by creativity in business? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky <laughs> question. But if you asked me to put it in one sentence, yes. I'd say all innovation yes. Eh, yes. is creativity. Okay. But not all creativity is innovative. Yes. Uh -huh. Now you see that is where it becomes... <laughs> You know, <laughs> yes, you need to expound on that yeah, because it's like a yeah. line in between there. Because yeah. yes, you you need a creative mind behind every innovation. Yeah, yeah, there has to be. Okay, the, I think they are cousins. They are half brothers. Yeah, hmm? same father, different mother. Yeah, because innovation will be mothered by the need yeah. to fill a gap. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, while creativity can keep this new innovation. Yeah. Uh, running and growing yeah. in itself as an innovation. Yeah. Yeah? You, you, because you innovate. The moment you innovate, this is an innovation. This, yeah. this year? Yeah. <laughs> this year what you did? Because I've been following. Yeah. It's an innovation and it is going to grow. Yeah. You can tell something that is going to grow. Yeah. Um, HTV is an innovation. Yeah. But it needs constant creative. refreshment yeah. of create, or on a creative angle. Yes. You know? Um, so I don't think you can say you can really pull them apart. Yeah. They are they are together. Creativity is the oil that keeps yeah. running it. Yeah. Wow, wow! I mean, we're talking about um, creativity for business success in Uganda. It's a part that people don't understand very well. It's a part that either the corporates don't understand very well or the consumers of the products that are in the market don't understand very well. And the typical point, case in point, is buy Uganda, build Uganda, boo-boo. It's completely confused. We don't understand the line between creative mind... <laughs> that is a very long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but but to, to, just, to pick, just yeah. to pick from where yeah. you are yes. on, 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 on the corporate side, yes, how yes. they don't get it. Um, man, you see, sometimes you look at the problems. Yes. Eh? Yeah. Uh, at then, yeah. when the problem has a, has a rose, yeah. But man, the, we, we have a backlog of, of conditioning yes. and tuning. Wow. You know, we, we've come from a system that has taught us that this has to be passed like this. Yeah. It, it, you know, this is, this is when you attain success. Mm -hmm. Your success mm -hmm. is based on when you, 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 you achieve eh, mm -hmm. highly mm -hmm. in these parameters. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. In these parameters. So we were told to operate, you know, in, in, in certain parameters that it, it, it becomes so okay for you not to stand out. Wow. You're preconditioned to yes. think that way and that's it. Yes. Until you, by the time you realize that, ah, man, you could have done better yeah. is, is when you are bored of routine. Because 
these corporates eh, wake up to practice almost the same, the same thing. thing. The same thing. A friend you know? of mine said, um, until the day a, a brand manager is fired from his job, that's the day he start looking for a sheet of paper to write his notes or to print his CV. Mm. That's when he realizes he has never bought a ream of paper. He doesn't know how much it costs. He doesn't know how much a pen costs. Then he goes to Nassau to look for it. That's the day. <laughs> I think the best the reality the, is distracting, yes, the yes. best company out of entertainment yes. to, to, to really look at to, to fully understand yes. why creativity is important in business yes. is, is Virgin. Yes. Okay, the conglomerate of businesses of you know Virgin the umbrella of those businesses. Yes, yes. Mr. Richard Branson. Branson yes. That's when you know, you know, if there is no creativity, he considers the business slagging. Wow. Faizo Chiwewa, what is the difference between creativity and innovation? I mean, um, a lot of people think that um, when you're programming a, you know, a festival, it's one and the same, and that is it. And mm. Richard has just given us a very nice perspective. But over to you, Faizo. What is the difference between creativity and innovation? Yeah, I mean, I would... uh, Richard, has, um, you know, uh, creativity is uh is like the fuel and uh, then innovation is the engine that needs that fuel to keep on um you know moving as well service or is this of uh, finding new ways or new means of uh, keeping you know but you know the thin line the thin line between uh innovation and creativity is really yeah, i think um whereas creativity could be just an enhancement of a, of a space you can for example the innovation as richard said that htv is an innovation and the creative pr uh, part of it is the fact that you have to continue creating new programs that are exciting for your followers and your audience and i think that's the creative process but the innovation has been done and but what makes innovation what makes a product to be considered innovative it's time the test of time and the fact that it has to be rendered relevant or useful to the uh, to the target market or to the target audience if you buy if you innovate a car and no one buys to, or no one needs to drive it then it's not a very innovative idea but you can have a car that you can work with in terms of uh, continuing the process of uh, you know, uh, revamping it, changing the color, or giving it a different style or a different design. It happens all the time, but you're not inventing a new car. You are basically creatively enhancing its look. So we always see um, innovation as a, as a far from process that has to be uh, given time and also approved for the purpose, as well as uh, creativity is the continuation of making sure that things keep exciting people keeps uh, things keep being different but also adding on to what is already there richard richard you've heard what Pfizer said let's just get straight to how do we practice creativity given the mm -hmm. the context we have now given to it the flesh we've given to it for the businesses in uganda to be more successful first um I think one of the key things eh, is to um, adopt the mindset that, that, that nothing can limit imagination. Yeah. Imagination cannot be boxed up, it can't be put in it. You have to continuously imagine things yeah. better. Yeah. Because if you do not imagine them better, there is no now spark for creativity. Yeah. Um, for, for example, we, we, we when we were starting off, we were trained actors, writers, directors. We had nowhere to, to get employment. Wow. We definitely, the natural thing to do was to run to theaters, to, to, to Bat Valley, yeah. a national theater. Look for, you know, where you can and be. There only three theaters and we're, yeah. we're channeling out thousands of people from universities every single year. <laughs> and, and by the way, yeah. um, by the time we finished, I think uh, now conventional type of theater ensembles eh, yeah. were, were starting to, you know, die out slowly. Yeah, so we had like, uh, say, three or four that were major. We had the Afri Talent, Ebonis, Baka Imbida, you know, and once in a while, Alex Mukuru, and a few other, you know, creators there. So there was no uh, clear place to be accommodated. Yeah. Because they almost have enough. 
So lucky enough, there was Philip Ruswata who tried to imagine things, imagine something new, imagine a weekly comedy show. He imagined it, and to us, it was a little crazy. By taking the young ones who yes. are, but because he was a lecturer, you know, he 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 dared. He dared, and he said, you know what? If we get space and we have the talents. Yeah. We can experiment. We shall get a formula. If we don't get a formula, we shall know. We, you, you can tell the formula is, is nowhere. Yeah. Then maybe we can figure out another way. He handpicked talents and we started figuring out how to do a weekly comedy show. Uh, th back then. Which never existed before. <laughs> it, it never existed. Wow. There, were, there, were, there was no weekly comedy shows. Yeah. Uh, theater was, you know, linear stories. You go sit, watch Afri Talent do. A play called uh, um, say, Navasangawa, and you sit it for four hours watching. It was fun, it was entertaining. But how do you stand out if you want now to also start? You have to bring something new. Yeah. There's always a younger audience. Yes. Always. Or there's always a, a, an existing audience yeah. that has not seen something new. Wow. So he dared. He put us in the you know thick of things. We tried, and in about a year and a half, a, a, a formula had been uh, gotten. Wow! After a few one two years, TV saw the value of the show, adopted the show, put it on TV. The rest was history. So I think with with, with experiences like that, yeah. it takes. Uh, don't limit the imagination. Yeah. Whatever is trending, imagine. Imagine it in a better way. Yeah. It will spark your creativity. Yeah. Um, then you have to dare. You have to dare. You have, to, you have seen how hard it is for people to take on new ideas. Yes. <laughs> hmm? Then you compare yes. yeah, the rigidity they yes, had yes. when the idea had just come yeah. and how much they are enjoying it yes, yes. Yeah, after a span of time. Yeah. Because when we started weekly comedy shows, yeah, the ones in the city, even the audience was like, wow. <laughs> who, who is going to watch this thing? I mean, which Uganda is going to make me yeah, yeah. for two hours <laughs> on a weekly basis? So it was a case of, yeah, yeah. you come. Yeah. If you don't like, yeah. it's, okay. it's okay. The next week, they bring two other friends. Yes. It was word of mouth, word of mouth. By the time the entire world learned, learned about the, com the weekly comedy show, yeah. it had grown to four people at TLC to 1,000 people in the upper gardens of the National Theatre. Wow. Yeah, but now the, <laughs> the trick is, now it is we yes. who also have to reinvent it. Yeah, or the, the innovation has to be yeah. continued being oiled by the creativity, yeah. as you said. Wow, well, we are talking about, you know, how do we, you know, creativity, how do we make money out of creativity? How can creativity make businesses successful in Uganda? You know? Um, Richard is giving us a masterclass with <laughs> Faizo <laughs> on this one here. Yeah, something that uh, you've talked about mm. that people don't usually take very seriously, mm. Richard. Mm. I've heard people say, I want to show me the numbers. I only see one or two people. Show me the numbers. <laughs> and you've just unpacked the whole mystery behind the numbers. Mm. That four people yeah. is now 1,500. Yes. But yes. it did not start with 1,500. True. And that for me, something that I, 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 I've learned from you right now is that if you continue being consistent with whatever you are doing, if you dare, you, you, you repeated the word, if you dare, if you mm. dare, you said three times, mm. then it's going to pay off. Mm. But many times we don't know how to keep the consistency of daring ah, to man. do something new. We give up very easily. And uh, one time a young person told me, says, uh, well, boss, I'm not going to eat creativity. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so off he walked the door. And he says, and the Nagala sent, uh, if you don't have money, uh, uh, kindness is not going to pay me. <laughs> I don't want to eat this. But, but that's a story of everyone. So Richard Chiwanje, Faiso Chiwewa, we're going to have to let Faiso run for his meeting. We are now yeah. talking about the Global Village. You know? Faiso has been on the show, is running for his next meeting in Belgium, where he caught a, mm -hmm. a train this morning. I, I imagine the day we can do that in Kampala. We'll catch a train to be in the Congo to do a show in Congo in Tanzania. He shall come. That yeah. time will come. 
<laughs> I hope we shall be alive. Yes. <laughs> we, we are going to contribute to the coming exactly. of those things. Exactly. It's a fantastic time to yes. be alive. Yes. So we're going to take another break. And when we come back, Richard Tuwande and I are going to continue with the show until the end while we're missing Faisal, uh, you know, who is running for his meeting. Stay right there. Creative Ministry will be back after this break. people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes, yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, yeah. and then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes. applicable to most of us in the industry. Yeah. One, most of them want to work with an institution yeah. or let's say a registered company. They want to come to Faiso and Faiso is, 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 uh, is, is, uh, is Bayimba but they want to talk to him as Bayimba. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So there's, there's, there's a way they do yeah. their things yeah. because of probably how their structure is designed. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So maybe we also as, as creatives we need to have What's the right word? We need to have, or to put that effort, yeah. see ourselves organized. Okay. I think that's the problem we have. Yeah. We are everywhere. And when nowhere. We, yeah, and nowhere at the same time. Yeah, when yeah. Faisal suggests that, hey guys, uh, I have given you a week, come to the island, mm -hmm. let's brainstorm about how we can make these things work. One is going to go like, I don't know if I am not 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 know if I so, yes. so we, we've got all these kind of hurdles, and, okay. the, and, and, and I think why the corporates are probably not even coming in to give a hand is because they don't even know where to start from. They don't know where. But auntie, for example, if they ask uh, filmmakers, Muriwa, uh, <laughs> where where do they go to? Yeah. You see what they I'm saying? They have nowhere to go. Yeah, to. I think they have nowhere to go to. Then of course we have UCC. I think UCC. Uh, that's one of the yeah, biggest yeah, yeah, hurdles yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about, um, uh, you know, collect this from these guys. Yes, not and, and, and that's the process yeah, of the growth. Yes, that's really, yes. really unfortunate. Yeah. But I pray that uh, we sit with them on one table and, 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 and make this work. Yeah. That's why I think probably, and, and that's the biggest reason that's why I think the, corp the corporate department has a um, Welcome back from that break. I hope you have gotten a, you know, a little bit of what we have been talking about here. There's that discussion with Musta in where we're talking about creative spaces in Uganda. For the first time in the history of Uganda, we actually have a creative space research mm. in Uganda. Yeah. There are two creative spaces for creative people to go. So you don't longer now need to put on your backpack and you wear your shorts and enter the restaurant and anything. Because <laughs> you're wearing shorts, yeah. you're entering a high profile, you know, sort oh, of like uh, restaurant and stuff. Give you the like food that. bill and they are coming. Uh, yes, yeah. at the same time, and then you go. <laughs> so we're talking about that on the show creative spaces and we wanted to connect this to this business yeah. discussion that we're yeah. having. Uh, Richard, thank you very much, first of all for the last part of the show, I want to take you straight to what does creativity bring to business success in your opinion? Um, it, it's, you know, you, creativity allows you to stay ahead of the pack. Mm -hmm. hmm? 
it 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 helps you become the trendsetter. You know, humankind is 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 set in a way that they will always mm, have a thing for the pioneer yes. of things. Yeah. So we see it if if you think about these big corporations we see in Uganda yeah. and how they advertise and the different promotions they bring. You will uh, somehow the target market will always have the pioneer front of mind. Yeah. Um, uh, so for me, creativity, that, that is how important it is because you will get the masters, you will, you, you, you will be, you'll be an A-lister on the papers. Okay. Yeah? But if, if, if you do not know how to channel, because there is not, there is not one company hmm? mm -hmm. in the arts or in business, yeah, as we know it, mm -hmm. there is no there's not a company that hires more than 10 people, yeah, and all of them are not creative. There is always creativity yeah. in a company. Yeah. But every organization has to have a leader that knows how to harness that creativity. That's the point. That right <laughs> there you've spoken it. <laughs> yes. Because it's, yes, it's, yeah. it's man, you know, uh, we, our society, you know, <laughs> sometimes, I think it is in our conditioning and our bringing up, mm -hmm. when people attain positions of leadership, yeah, yeah they wear the boss clock, you yeah, know, yeah. instead of, you know... A servant person, yes. You know, uh, that is when now yeah. you need to be part of yes. the other ones yeah. and know who yeah. is going to be coupled with who yeah. to achieve uh, something. Yeah. You know, creativity, creativity is all over the place. Harnessing it is a challenge. So, in other words, you're saying um, every business needs to have that one leader, that one person who harness the creativity in the team that they have yeah. in order for that business to be successful. Yes. Uh, if they don't have that, that, that leader might come and go, yeah. but a system has to be created mm -hmm. or uh, activities, it could be just activities, regular activities, yeah. Yeah? that if a consistency is, is kept, yeah. A lot of our ideas will bounce off creative people yeah. and create one uh, big thing. Wow. Mm. Well, that is one takeaway from Richard right there. How can businesses earn from creativity to be successful in Uganda? Uh, Richard, let's dive to the next one. I mm. want to just go to this next question. Why is creativity very important for the success of a business, in your opinion? Mm. Why is creativity very important for the success of our businesses? For me, <laughs> creativity is, uh, it's, 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 I'll, I'll take you a, a little bit back from, from what I mentioned. Is you don't want to start something, mm -hmm. yeah, for just starting sake. Mm -hmm. Businesses have to grow. Businesses have to grow in, in revenue and in how many lives a business touches, yeah. you know. Uh, so creativity is very important for growth because business is not about just growth of revenue. Mm -hmm. Creativity is very important for growth of any kind of organization. In other words, Richard, you're saying, even as an individual, if mm -hmm. I am not creative, mm -hmm. there's no way, I can't wear this exact same shirt over and over. <laughs> even Balam had to change his t-shirt at some point. <laughs> We're used to Balam wearing one type of t-shirt and then and at some point he had to change. So you're saying that uh, we, we've got to be, it's important, creativity is important in business success mm. as good as in an individual life, that we are reinventing ourselves over and over and True. we're thinking about these things over and over. Richard, in that context, how does creativity facilitate the business growth or how can it facilitate the business growth in Uganda? Take, for example, mm -hmm. you guys of the Fun Factory. Mm -hmm. You started at the backyard of Kampala, mm -hmm. and now you are in the city of Johannesburg, mm -hmm. and, you know, springing out from there and going to the rest of Africa. Yes. And I'm sure soon enough, somebody's going to see you from Hollywood and say, yes. these guys, Annington was here and was telling yes. us how you're producing, you know, 14 different skits every single we sure. he says that mm -hmm. we are the only group in the entire Africa who has managed to do this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, entire Africa. Yeah, and then in the world, I think it's 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 only Fun Factory and yeah. Saturday Night Live yes. that do a weekly sketch comedy show. Maybe somewhere in the Orientals, a Japan, new, there, yeah, yes. you know. But yes. sketch new, comedy, new new show every, every week, week, every week. 
Um, I think that contributes to why, you know, uh, we worked out a formula. We've been working together for a long time. Yeah. We figured out each other's strengths and we know uh, I could be good, but I'm better when I'm with Dixon Zizinga. Yeah. Because I know exactly how how I and him can gel well together yeah. and create something bigger than if he did a skit on his own. Yeah. Um, so that tags into what I explained earlier. You know, creativity is there, harnessing it can be a problem. It yeah. is very easy to have Fun Factory and not to have a breakthrough till now. Yeah, uh, because humans are humans. You have to know the creativity alone cannot be uh, the, the, the winning horse. Yeah. So you're saying, how does it facilitate yeah. business growth? Yeah. I think, f f um, you know, we, whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. whether formally or informally, yeah. Mm, yeah. We, we research. Mm -hmm. We research. Some people start businesses because they went around, they had, uh, it is basically accidental research. Yes. But if we, we, in the creative business, accept and uh, manage our creative business as as well as businesses are managed because it is a business yes then we need to research so research and development is equally very important when you research and you know exactly what they want and you already have this creativity yes yeah it will just doop, boom wow because for us now yeah. you know ugandans are the only kind of talents that can entertain uh, all English speaking Africa. Yeah. Not a lot of people are watching Nigerian movies here. Yes. Uh, like they used to. Yeah? Yeah. Now they are watching our content. Yes. But our research shows that, that when Ugandan dramas go to West Africa, yeah. West Africans enjoy find it our dramas more superior. It. Yes. To theirs. To theirs. Actually, a friend of mine, Uti Nwachuku, who was in Big Brother, wrote to me yes. one time and I was saying the same thing, yeah. Now, you see, I'm going to tell you two stories here yes. that will surprise <laughs> you. But it is such, such yes. research, yeah. not, not, not uh, you know, formally commissioned, yeah. that now allows us to even open the, the, the you know, yeah. uh, target wider. Yes. You know, because Zambia, Malawi, Ghana, Nigeria, yeah. uh, Zimbabwe, even South Africa yeah. and Tanzania and Kenya can be our audience. Because before lockdown, we used to stream our show for two hours. And little did we know it was Zambians and Malawians that were making the numbers. Yes. Until you act in Uganda, then you see comments. But now, please, go back to English. Yes. Da, 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 yes. Then when you check their profiles, Malawi, yeah, Malawi. Zambia, <laughs> Kenya, Rwanda. Yeah? Yes, yes. It is, it is that good for us yeah. Yeah, to, 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 to capitalize on that there's a time we, we had a TV drama called The Hostel yeah. and it was airing on all African magic channels yes. at some point. Yeah. So Ghana and Nigeria were watching. Yeah. A friend of mine called me and told me, Richard, I'm going to win a bet here of $300. Yeah. The Ghanaians who I'm watching The Hostel with think you guys are Zimbabwean. They think Uganda cannot produce this kind of yeah. stuff. The, he told them, wait for the credits and you'll see. He won the bet, long yes, story cut short. <laughs> and, he and he told me, Richard, yes. make it a point to create yes. for English speaking mm -hmm. West Africa. And uh, well, that we knew years ago. But the resources to achieve that, the only way, the best, to do, the best way to do it is to now entertain Africa digitally. So now, Fun Factory might need Eddie yeah. as a consultant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so um, um, really, I don't think creativity eh, yeah. alone can be a winning horse. Yeah. Research yeah. and development. Research and development. Then, then you know, okay, we can create in this line, yeah. but the money, according to what we now know, yeah. will come from Rwanda and wow. Kenya and Tanzania. Wow. Mm. Well, thank you so much, everybody, you've heard from Richard. In fact, I want to allow Richard to read this by himself. This is probably the longest of a comment here. I want you to read that comment loud to everyone. <laughs> this is coming because sometimes well, when I read the comment, the, people say yes, yes. <laughs> this is thanks a lot, Mr. Richard, to Anje Kofi and Chiwewa. I still think more thought should be put into the... De, 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 uh, which word is this? Yes. Huh? Uh, just want to... Delineating. To delineate. 
to to mm. delineating yes to delineating the arts, the arts yes uh -huh. and cultural sector yes creative sector yes. and separate it from the umbrella Oh, the umbrella creative industry, yes. especially to support policy and decision making. Yes. A businessman selling healthcare products is part of the healthcare industry, yes. but not yes. a healthcare professional simply because <laughs> healthcare is yes. well deline delineated. Yes. Uh, uh, please excuse us if we don't the, pronounce the, the uh, delineating well, yeah, very well. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I'm from Chiruhura. <laughs> I cannot run away from yourself. Yes. Yeah, it makes sense that we clearly. Deline yeah, delineate, yes. I think it's delineate, yes. delineate the arts yes. and culture sector, yes. yeah, from, you know, the big umbrella, you know, creative industry. Yes. Wouldn't you agree? It is also possible this is more academic and less practical. I, I agree with him. Yes, I, I, really, I also agree with him. I really agree with him. Yeah. We, we need to delineate it. We need to create a proper lane yes. for the creative creative uh, you know um, the, the arts and cultural sector yeah yeah though you know it's 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 it's, it's fueled by creativity but it's yeah. the arts yeah. and culture sector yes what we can just say is at some point if yeah. if creativity has to help uh business growth yes some basics don't change yes which is always a yes. constant yes and and then richard i want to just um you know br put this to to my brother there um uh, thank you very much first of all um my brother, uh, Mr. Keith Nyende. Nyende, mm. you, you raised a fantastic point right there. Mm. And uh, teacher Mpaire says, I love this conversation. <laughs> so that's a By the way, Keith, <laughs> I know Keith. <laughs> Keith, Keith. Keith is one of uh, uh, the brightest cultural entrepreneurs yes. I've, 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 in our times. Yes. Th that guy was the brainchild behind Nyege Nyege. Wow. Uh, he, wow. He, he, he was the first person to imagine wider yeah. and uh, dare yes. to do a festival on the Nile. Yes. Mm. Wow. And thank you very much, Keith. Thank you very much, Teacher Empire, for being a part of the show. I want to dive straight to a comment coming all the way from Australia. Dennis in Australia is always a constant guy watching the show. Wow. Uh, Eddie Okila, thank you very much for bringing um, Richard Coffey onto the show. Uh, is one of my favorite actors out of Uganda. <laughs> he keeps me wow. out of home, you know, happy. I am ah. glued to, you know, watching the Fun Factory all the way. I live in Sydney. Wow. And thank you very much for bringing these guys always on the show. Tell Richard to continue channeling out the things that I love. And uh, people don't understand wow. that this particular discussion is good for us because we don't usually get sort of like the interesting idea ideas that come out of uganda there's no tv that looks after the people who are in the diaspora so richard shout out to you <laughs> <laughs> we're just having that conversation before you came back <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and i want to go to a whatsapp message here coming from the u.s uh first of all shout out to coach anton in daula and of course uh, you know my professor from another mother professor penina chai your assistant professor for design communication washington university Ugandans wow. are in big places. You are rubbing shoulders <laughs> with the... <laughs> and, uh, well, I need to get in touch yes, with her. And, <laughs> and uh, but, you know, she always said that we need to come with a design identity for Uganda. That's... Design identity for Uganda. So, Professor Penina Chayo, thank you so much. Yes. That is very important. And, uh, Anthony Ndawula, I want to dive out to JB Atine all the way in Belgium. Says, I... Uh, is always loving the discussion. JB is into the IT okay. sector in Belgium, and wow. uh, these are big people doing serious consultancy in in you know outside countries wow. as we say it in Uganda. Wow. Wow. Guys, shout out to all of you guys. I want to go straight to my brother from another mother in Denmark, Edio Killer. Thank you very much for bringing Richard to one day. Faizo and Richard today nailed the show. I wish Faizo wasn't running. I would want to hear more coming from those fellows about how we can actually make money out of creativity. Most businesses in Kampala, back in Kampala, think that creative people are crazy. But no one will buy a tomato that is packed in a sack. But I will buy a tomato which is nicely packaged and put in the cavera that I can see with a label made out of Uganda or pro product of Uganda. That's what creativity does. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> and you see, simple. It's yes. just a, usually a simple yes. twist. Yes. Yeah. That, that makes, creates another breakthrough. Yes. And you see, most of the creative ideas that yes. change the world or yes. change sectors or bring in new trends. Yes. You look at the idea and you're like, whoa, how is it that I didn't think about that? 
you know because the smallest thing richard are usually the most difficult thing to people to see that's why creative creative people mm. needs to be paid money yes because I the know. thing that you're looking at it as very small i know is usually the biggest thing that people are looking True. for and i want to dive straight to south africa before we <laughs> mm -hmm. we need to go back and finish the show uh, that gentleman on the show is my best actor in that uh, comedy show. This I am a, a guy pressure. who <laughs> love watching the things. It's 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 an amazing to see him at uh, that calm, that professional, <laughs> and out of the stage, out of character. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm actually <laughs> discussing how we can take things. I'm a Ugandan living in South Africa. This channel is my place to be. Wow. 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 And uh, thank you very much, guys. I want to just take Richard back to the show. I told you to send your kisses and this is coming. If you think we're not doing well, please diss us. If you think we're doing well, kiss us. Richard, mm -hmm. this discussion, I know it's going to be a very important discussion to most people. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're going to be looking more into having a discussion with you going forward. How does creativity, Richard, or rather, my last question to you actually for the day, why is creativity very important for an entrepreneur? The world describes Uganda as the most entrepreneurial country in the world. Yes. But Ugandan businesses that are usually started, uh -huh. as they always say, die before they see the next birthday. In fact, to me, we don't go beyond six months of our existence. And uh, people are always wondering that Ugandans are very creative, they're very entrepreneurial, but how businesses don't go beyond that. Yeah. Richard, there's a university or an organization that did research studies about anthropology okay you know about uganda has uh -huh. been the most culturally diverse country in the world True. and i think the virgin you know sort of like paid money for that research to come out now all of this research is about uganda it's about the people out of uganda it's about africa it's about why is it that our businesses don't go beyond that and today we're talking about creativity for business success in Uganda. Yes. My last question to you for the show is, mm. why is creativity important for an entrepreneur? Because most people start businesses and think that they're just going to run. I don't need a, a designer. I don't need a copywriter. Oh, that's true. Um, it, is, it, is, it is very important for an entrepreneur. You know, at, at, at the core, the, 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 the simple basic of yeah. being an, an entrepreneur is, is you're presenting something new. Yeah. Uh, or you're solving a big problem in a new way, yeah, yeah? Um, that that is maybe you're making it comfortable for your target audience, yeah. or uh, cheaper, you know, uh, or, or 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 you have uh, you have basically killed or presented something new to buy yeah. and 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 give people an experience yeah. because I, I think we can never think from the standpoint of the entrepreneur. We have to think from also the standpoint of the buyer. Yes, you know. Yeah what is the experience mm -hmm. or what is the convenience that you are causing yeah. now that means you cannot come and do exactly what has been uh, around yeah. now for me in my thinking yeah. i think that is the biggest problem with with uh, entrepreneurs or business startups yeah. we there's there's a syndrome we have as ugandans we 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 we, we come to fit in we want to fit in you think you can be uh, a good singer you come to fit in yeah. into what is happening you think you can enter the um, whatever kind of business you come to fit in not to present it in a better or uh, different way or convenient way for the end consumer yeah, yeah? Uh, so for me that is the challenge now if 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 you are not going to fit in you need to have creativity you need to work with teams yeah um like i told you fun factory is made of like 10 12 very creative yeah. minds yeah but m dixon's creativity amplifies mine or mine gels well gels well with his yeah. and a big product is created yeah. dixon alone can can earn all the money he wants if he's well managed yes. yeah? yeah and i can but if we figure out Come together. Yeah, what we want to bring on yeah. the table, yeah. uh, if we want to sell it to, say, entire Uganda yeah. and Bantu speaking, uh, you know, Country. Africa, yeah. then we have to put together a team and, and hit it. So for me, don't fit in. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, yeah. you don't have to fit in. Twist what has been around. And how are you going to do it if you don't get creative teams together? Wow.
Mm. But I don't know. We need a creative hub in Uganda <laughs> where, where you know this is my idea. Yes, yes. But I need a brain like Okilas. Yes, yes. Then I need uh, so and so. Um, where we are so weak also in Uganda is we are so weak on partnerships. Yes. We are because so we are weak. very individualistic in our nature, in our thinking. You know, we are, we are quite very myopic and quite very mm. mediocre in a way of doing things if the word exists. I'm talking about the word mediocrity striving yeah. where there's ignorance. In Uganda, man, mediocrity is a standard. <laughs> it is a standard as they need it. <laughs> like Chukulie. <laughs> Well, guys, <laughs> I, I told you this show is going to be very interesting. Richard, we're going to bring this show to a close. Um, creativity for innovation and profit. What's your score? <laughs> creativity yes. for innovation, innovation and profit. And profit. Yes. What's your score? Uh, how I've done over the years. Eh? <laughs> yes, yes. Ah, I think <laughs> I, th I am happy that I am uh, above average. Yes. <laughs> Six, eh? yes, yes. and I know now how yes. to earn the other portion that yes. I have not. Uh, the you four, know. yes. Okay. But it is a good thing to yeah. be consistent. Yeah. Um, uh, along the way, yeah. we had many reasons to give up, man. Yeah. Many reasons to yeah. give up. Yeah. But man, bro, if 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 you have a dream, if 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 you see what it can be yeah. ten years from where you're standing, yeah. eh? it gives you a reason to, to to keep going. While you think it is big, yeah. you might even hit it in yeah. four years, yeah. and then, you know. Wow. Um, so it, I, I, let's let's say I'm there six point five seven. <laughs> You're going to be seeing what yeah. we are creating. Yeah. By the way, yeah. personally, I'm happy COVID came. <laughs> so so it wasn't <laughs> really negative. No 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 no, 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 no. For example, um, uh, it's because we are uh, we are not here to specifically talk about what we did or yeah. or is it okay? Yeah, yeah, you, no, mm. please, yes. When we went for total lockdown, we we it hit us. You know, we are. Uh, we had a weekly comedy show at the yeah. National Theatre. Yeah. Every, you know, every week. We do 52 shows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A year. Fresh new shows. Then we have the, for the affluent camper yes. who, who wants to pay 100,000 shillings. Yes. Then we have some at the Serena that reports there. But now, this is total lockdown. We went into lockdown. We thought it was going to be one month. Yeah. It became two. Yes. It became three. Yes. Eh. 90 days became 140. Yeah. Towards the end of, <laughs> towards the end of the second uh, month. Yeah. Uh, figured things were not going to be okay. the same again so we got what our craft and what we used to prod it was the raw material we used to churn out comedy shows yeah. so we decided now to use this craft to produce content that fits the times um, awareness about the covid yeah. uh, but but the water had to be comedy yeah. They, they, we had to crack people. The up. ingredient was yes, yes, was that we had yes. to crack people up. We, they needed to laugh in their. The one was stressed. The one needed some laughters. You know, when yeah. we went into lockdown, our videos would have uh, say a hundred thousand views yes. from the previous night. Yes. Yeah, you know, a hundred thousand from the previous night. But yeah. now, during total lockdown, when we started putting out really funny content, yeah. um, that that is bearing uh, had a bearing around the COVID uh, yes, nineteen. Yes. You put it up, and in 24 hours, it has 600,000 viewers. So yeah. we went on with that. And when we started, we partners were watching. Uh, not partners then, yes. partners now. Yeah, okay. Because like, they, they never come at the beginning of it. Yeah. Most have said they need to come now, because if they're not part of us now, now. in fact, Pfizer said, by the time the corporate don't think come of now, coming, yes, yeah. we don't need the corporate. We'll be corporate corporation ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we have a big part yes, eh, yes, yes. to play yeah. on teaching them yeah. how powerful how really powerful yeah. the arts are yeah. in driving business. Wow. Yeah? Um, because Which is the essence of this show today. Mm -hmm. You know? Please. And, and you see, for us, yeah. that is how we have survived, by, yeah. by using the craft now in a different space. Yeah. So we did that. Mastercard came on board to our ways, uh, and that's how we've been doing it. Now, why I say we need to teach now the business sector how important the arts are. I, I do advertising copywriting. Sometimes I sit in, in boardrooms and they are giving me briefs and they really want an ad that can touch people, not just communicate. But most cases, you go through a, a, a session of schooling them on why what you're creating will work. Yeah. Yeah? Because it, it is, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but yeah. most people who preside over big offices that make decisions yeah. on how uh, products, uh, a, pro a, product, uh, a product is going to be communicated or the brand, um, we, we still have a lot of them who operate textbook. Yeah. 
proper textbook. It's a standard operating procedure. Yes, yes these, yes, these yes. are the parameters. Yes. But we guys know the temperature yeah. of the audience. Yes. And the you, consumers. Yes. So you, you, you have to tell them, if you really want to do mass market, yeah. we are going to get off this lane a bit, eh? put one foot this side. So the, there's always that fear of risking because they are not managing their own money, some yes. of them. <laughs> and they often take back the they take back the budget. Navi was here on the CEO bench and he says, I really get mad when the marketing manager is taking back the budget meant mm. for marketing mm -hmm. and he's taking it back. That person should not should be fired because why would you be given the money a budget for market things and you're taking it back? Well, Richard, thank you very much for coming to the show today. We will definitely be bringing you back next week to discuss the importance of creativity in making businesses successful. We've started the drumming of these things. What are the importance of business, of creativity in business, and how can we harness that, yep. you know, processes and the importance of that to make businesses more successful in Uganda? Yep. Everyone is crying in Uganda or in, in Africa or across the world, but I think that we can do something that will allow us to get there, allow us to understand how we can use creativity for businesses be successful in Uganda. Once again, I want to say thank you so much for coming to the show. And of course, to Faisal, your final parting shot. By the way, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. you are heavily, heavily, you know, requested to come on the show by so many people. When we started really? the Creative Spaces and we brought, you know, most of the talk about the Creative Spaces and mm -hmm. Faisal is a resident panelist here. They said the next topic when you're moving away from Creative Spaces, you need to bring people who are going to tell us how creative creativity can be used in business for it to be successful. Mm -hmm. And overall, there was a lot of nomination for you to come onto the show. There was a lot of vote for, you know, my brother from another mother, <coughs> Jeremy Biemanzi, to come on the show. Wow. And our job is to make sure you come to the program. That is very flattering because I don't think I've informed myself very well, <laughs> but I'm on that path. Yes. But what I know is, uh, well, we, we are not in a bad place, yeah. but there's a lot of growth we can achieve. Yeah. Um, and, and most importantly, we need to inspire the generations that are coming yeah. uh, after us uh, because we have a generation that really wants things to be easy. Yeah. You know, when and we if want they are not grounded, they, it might be very problem, problematic, yep. yes. Yep. Uh, lucky enough, they are in a time yeah. where actually things can get easier than they were for us yeah. if they get to know their basics. And, and, and uh, what to do while, while you keep the patients yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Our creative industry has come to an end, but we want to close up the show by allowing Richard. He said at the beginning of the show mm. that he uh, doesn't know whether he's a musician or he's a <laughs> singer, so we want to know. He's going to close up the show with that part oh my God. of the show. Is he a musician or a singer? You're going to vote for yourself. Over to you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a singer who sings for fun. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I get surprised when people pay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yes. Do you know I started out as a singer? Yes. Yeah, something I, I, yes. I, I, you know, shocked myself. Yes. And, and, and also see what, what and the talent you had in you. Yes. Had I known what I know now. Yes. Huh? Yes. Then. Yes. I don't know. I would have to, had to fly in for this interview. <laughs> All right, guys, the creative industry, it's a wrap from us here. Richard, Edio, Killer, Faisal, Chiwewa in Belgium. And to all of you guys all across the world, we want to say thank you. And to the crew here that makes this camera and the lighting and the things looks really beautiful, we want to say thank you. It is a teamwork, not a killer work, that makes things happen. Until next week, we'll be talking about the importance of creativity in making businesses successful, both in Uganda and all across the world. Stay right there. We'll be right back next week. Signing out, Eddie O'Killer, Richard, Faiso, it's a wrap. Thank you. people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call 
uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's book face. <laughs> Why are you on book face? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince?